So is this uh, not wanting to break previous use cases, the reason why even though you don't think Telnet should have been added, it's still there at this stage? Yes. Right. Yeah. That plus sort of there's not a big of a gain to remove it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I get that question quite a lot when I say, sure, it supports Gopher too. And they say, Gopher, isn't that sort of, why do you have that around? There's, but in most you, cases... If you go into like the Linux YouTube space, there's like five people that talk about Gopher all the time. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but, but there's also that usually those tiny uh, edge case protocols, they're very easy to just keep around. There's no not many users, so we don't get a lot of problems with them. There's not a lot of development. Right. There's not a lot of friction. So they basically, you know, they sit there over there in the corner. Nobody had looked at them for the last year. Mm -hmm. It's not, not not a big problem for us. So so usually, it's, <clears throat> why remove that? That's just mm -hmm. more work to remove them than just let, leave them in the corner. Don't bother them. I mean, it's the big protocols that everyone is using. Those are the ones that get all the attention, get the mm -hmm. problems, get the development, and you know, all, all the time. So outside of HTTP, what are the protocols you often see uh, like discussed the most, like with issues or anything just relying on the project? Obviously, HTTP is probably the biggest one, but what are yeah, the like, second, HTTP, third ones? Yeah, HTTPS, of course, they're really the, by far the biggest ones. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, I, I, the SSH ones, SFTP, SCP. Right. Uh, FTP, still some traffic. And, and I have users, I mean, still happening on IMAP, SMTP. But then uh, I know that we also have uh, occasional reports on, on RTSP. So th there are users of them. And I have this annual survey when I ask users, uh, well, they voluntarily participate, of course. So right, right, right. Please help me uh, answer some questions about curl. And every year, all the protocols are selected by more than one user. And I usually get, you know, at least uh, several hundred of responses. So at least every year, you know, at least three people check box, uh, marks the checkboxes for all of those protocols, including, <laughs> you know, RTSP, Gopher, and the... Uh, well, I get the... Gopher, but I'm... How is there at least one person that's still looking at Telnet? I don't... What I want to know what use case that person has for Telnet. Well, I, I really do. In most cases, I, what I get to hear about is people saying, well, I use this when I run my pen tests or when I want to do some right. other... Uh, and you know, a lot of people have removed the telnet clients from their operating systems, or whatever. So curl is still there to do the telnet stuff mm -hmm. when you want to run them on some weird port to do manual fiddling or whatever. Mm -hmm. So there's a little bit of that, you know, trying out crazy things that you nobody really thought you should do. So, mm -hmm. but then of course I don't know. I mean, people say that you are using it. Sometimes I suspect that people just say that so that mm -hmm. I won't remove them. So, sure, you know, by sympathy. No, 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 keep this. I, I, I promise I use this. <laughs> I have no idea what it is. So I, I tend to actually check how many users are checking all the protocols because that seems highly unlikely, right? That right. someone would say, sure, I used 28 different protocols last year. No way, I don't believe it. But it's actually very rare that someone claims that. So. <laughs> now, you say that, but I did have someone on here before who has... So he, because of weird American laws, he owns the telephone lines on his property and has a local dial-up network that he uses to control a, a local weather system. So you say that's weird, but there are people doing things like that out there. So I'm surely, surely yes. there's someone doing that. Yes. So yeah, exactly. And and when when you've shipped something long enough and you have all those weird things, I mean, who knows? There could be two people somewhere doing all that. And mm -hmm. it's sometimes also I get that question. So I mean, it's also a matter of counting users, right? I don't mm -hmm. really. For, for me, it doesn't. It's not more work to support something for two users than two billion users, mm -hmm. as long as code is there, as long as someone maintains it. It's, it doesn't matter the number of users. It's still the same code and the same effort so mm -hmm. i don't know as long as things keep running it's there everyone is happy mm -hmm. that makes good. sense as long as it doesn't cause some sort of issue in something else that's more important it just stays in its own place and does its thing exactly if it would have gotten in the way for something more important like sort of if the gopher code would have you know been in the way for the http then we would have gotten rid of it because I think that's much more important because that's sort of the main protocol that we do, but it, but it, it isn't. And we actually have a pretty good architecture in curl so that most of the protocol implementations are off in their own corners. So we don't have to deal with them if we don't deal with that protocol specifically. And most of the transfer engine stuff is a generic thing that just shuffles data in either direction. Is that architecture something that 
was thought about like very early on as you got from HD, uh, HTTP to FTP and all of this? Or was that something that had to come a bit later when you realized that this was going to become a lot more than just a couple of protocols? Uh, yeah, it's actually just been a gradual development for a very long time. So no, it started out the most simple, basic way. And I think mostly by accident or by luck, we chose a pretty good API for libcurl when we selected how to do how to do transfers. So we we came to pick an arbitra sort of an arbitration where where you don't know a lot of the protocols when you ask for transfers. So you basically say, here's a URL, and then you change behavior with a lot of different options that are not super close to the protocol. Sometimes there are some things are not, but mm -hmm. at least that made it sort of that abstraction layer made it possible for us to actually change quite a lot of internals without changing the externals. Mm -hmm. And that helped us a lot. So it was actually, it has been re-architectured and refactored quite a lot of times mm -hmm. over the years. So no, it started out really stupid, but we have been able to sort of clean things up pretty, it still has its ugly corners, of course. Mm -hmm. And I mean, 25, 27 years of code. So, but it's pretty good, I would say. And I'm sure you've learned a lot about development as you've been going through this project. Like it's it's not just oh you knew what you knew then you still know only that amount. Like you've it, like you've learned a lot more about how you can structure this code in a way that's going to be useful long into the future. Exactly. So exactly, and I I really did not know that in the beginning. So I wouldn't have been able to do it. You know. So I'd, so no, I think it's. I think, I mean, as a developer, I think it's pretty good to just do things that work now and not anticipate so much what happens in 10 years because we don't know. So I think right. it's, it's been good that way. And of course, I've learned uh, how to do things. And we, you know, we added protocols that I didn't know about then. And then we sort of realized how to do things. You know, for example, I, I mentioned I did FTP back in 1997. And mm -hmm. FTP is a very different protocol compared to Gopher and HTTP because FTP is such a back and forth command response. So, you know, you have to do a lot of commands, get response, command, response, mm -hmm. command, response. And and then it turns out, uh, I think roughly 10 years later, something 2000, I don't remember, I added support for IMAP, SMTP, and um, POP3. And they happen to be very FTP-like. Okay. And that was an opportunity. So, oh, suddenly I had the FTP, and then I added three new protocols that were very command response driven, more or less like FTP, but with different commands and different ways to get the responses. But still, so then I, of course, re architectured that part. So now we have a generic engine to do those back and forth protocols. And so I think it makes sense to re architecture and, and handle what's sort of the next workload. Right what comes at you now and when we handle it. We actually did a pretty good um, refactor of curl again uh, late last year when mm -hmm. we added support for, for new protocol stuff. You know, these days we had, uh, well, we have HTTP 3 support since a few years, but um, the HTTP 3 is uh, adding uh, a new, quite a few new challenges, I would say, uh, okay. problems, uh, interesting quirks for, for someone who's, who's doing internet transfers because it's done over Quick, which is done over UDP. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's a completely different network stack. You don't have that in the kernel. You have a different libraries and stuff. So, eh, you know, opens up a range of new different ways to do things and new paths in the code. So, but, so we had a pretty big, big refactor quite recently to be able to handle all that in, in a decent fashion. 